Oh, my mistake. You know, I had a hardware mute and I was telling myself I wouldn't forget to, uh, to push it. Let me go back to the beginning and we'll start over. Uh, so hi everybody, uh, my name is Jamin Becker and today I'll be talking about Packetotal, which is a tool that I... Can everyone hear me now? I believe so. Perfect. Uh, all right, third time's the charm. Uh, I'll be talking about Packet Total, which is a tool that I've been developing since 2016. Oh, you know, I had a hardware mute and I was telling myself I wouldn't forget to, uh, to push it. Let me go back to the beginning and we'll start over. Uh, so hi everybody, uh, my name is Jamin Becker and today I'll be talking. All right, so a little bit about myself. I started my career. Let's start over one more time. Can everybody hear me now? Better? I'll wait five seconds and then I'm going to continue. All right, we'll assume that it's working uh, for right now. So uh, a little bit about myself. I started my career in cybersecurity on the operations side, uh, doing incident response for some uh, fairly large financial institutions. And I think it was during this time uh, that I got a chance to assist with the rollout of Security Onion into our production environment, which for me served as my initial introduction into the world of Zeek and was kind of a major inflection point in my career. Um, it helped me realize that my interests uh, lay more in the realm of research and development and uh, sort of served as an initial uh, introduction into uh, the, this exciting world. I love the types of problems and challenges presented within NetSec and it was sort of out of that ambition that I decided that I wanted to contribute something fairly unique to the community and Packet Total was sort of born out of that. All right. Um, so as some of you are surely aware, uh, packet total, uh, has shared some similarities, at least as far as name with virus total, um, and you're not crazy. There are some similarities there back when I first started drafting the requirements for packet total as an analysis engine. Uh, my original goal was to provide some very similar, uh, sets of features as virus total, uh, provided only instead of analyzing binaries, uh, the tool would handle static packet capture files. And I should probably stop here and just say, uh, for those that are not aware, and I'm sure that most are, a PCAP file is simply a way of bundling up live network traffic into a format that can be analyzed offline with tools such as Wireshark or uh, Zeek. Um, unfortunately, modeling the tool directly off of VirusTotal was somewhat of a flawed idea. Uh, the network traffic encapsulated within PCAP files is a hodgepodge of conversations, um, often originating from multiple machines. And because of this, they can't really be analyzed the same way as an executable that performs a, a specific set of tasks that can be categorized as malicious or not malicious. Um, so this, this ultimately led me to reevaluate some of the goals of the project. And I landed on the ones in this slide. Um, number one, I wanted to provide the security community with a platform for sharing malicious uh, PCAP files. And I think at least in this sense, the tool was a lot like VirusTotal. Uh, you could upload a PCAP file, start the analysis where it is queued on a processing node as we call them internally. Um, and then they would be evaluated by a set of analysis engines that would you know, pr produce some kind of result. Um, however, instead of those analysis engines making some kind of binary, is it malicious or is it not malicious determination, we operated a bit more as a sandbox. Um, and the types of information that we provided was a little bit more contextual in nature. Uh, the second goal was to prioritize the importance of giving users the ability to search for PCAP files shared by other users. Um, one of the main use cases that I kind of envisioned for the tool um, was the ability for content developers, and that, that is people that are developing capabilities to detect malicious activity, to be able to download PCAPs that could, be, that could then be used to validate the, F, 
uh, the efficacy of those detection capabilities. Um, this actually did result in some design um, choices. Uh, specifically, we uh, I ended up migrating to Elasticsearch as a result of this because of the uh, flexibility of the, uh, their query DSL, which um, provides um, basically a, a, as many of you I'm sure know, a, uh, a search engine uh, into um, whatever kind of data that you're indexing. Uh, the final goal came about as a result of my realization that answering questions like, is it malicious, was just really not enough in the domain of network analysis. And so um, I decided to shift the focus of the tool towards simplifying the PCAP analysis process. Um, I wanted to be able to provide logs that represented transactions of interest to security researchers. And up until that point, I didn't really know of any public platform that was able to do that in the context of cybersecurity um, with packet capture files. Um, now, this sounds like a pretty perfect use case for Zeek, but unfortunately, when I started um, developing Packet Total, uh, I wrote a version of the tool that um, I, I actually hadn't been aware that Zeek had uh, static packet capture replay capabilities. I had used it to snip traffic on the wire, but I never actually used uh, a taxi option. And um, as a result, the first version of the tool uh, that I never ended up releasing could basically take a PCAP file and turn it into a set of flow logs um, and also do some very basic inferences on it, um, like probable brute force attacks, suspicious actors based on IP address, or like taking Shannon entropy of a host name and scoring the likelihood that a DGA had been applied to it. Um, suffice it to say that TCP reassembly was kind of a trickier problem than I thought to do at speed. Uh, and I also got pretty tired of writing my own protocol parsers and trying to adapt um, you know, those that have been already written. So instead, uh, I kind of went back to um, seeing if somebody else had built this wheel for me. And I ended up rereading the Zeek documentation and found out, hey, there is a static packet capture option. Um, so I ripped out uh, all of my custom protocol parsers and all of the stuff that I had initially written and I replaced it with Zeek for metadata extraction. Um, I also ended up ripping out the alerting wrappers that I had written on the top of T-Shark opting for Sericata. And by February of 2017, the first version of the tool was released to the community for public use. Uh, I wasted a little bit of time at the beginning of this call trying to get the mute button to work. So I won't waste too much time on this slide. Um, but I did want to say that I included these slides to show some areas where the tool was iteratively, iteratively improved over time due to feedback from the users in our community. Um, and this is always something that I'm encouraging. This tool really wouldn't be where it is today if it weren't for that feedback loop. Um, I wanted to dedicate most of this presentation to going through some actual live demos on the site. But before I dive into that, let's talk a little bit about architecture. Um, one of the obvious requirements of the tool was the ability to support concurrent user uploads. And uh, to accomplish this, Packet Total relies on a cluster of processing nodes. Um, sorry about the line. Let me see if I can fix that. I'm going to switch my mic for everybody on this call. And you just uh, message me in the chat if it's any better, OK? I'll wait five seconds. Is that better or worse? Okay, I'm gonna assume it's better until I hear otherwise. Uh, each node has a set of engines that run at analysis time. They generate logs that are then mapped into elastic search indices. Um, in this case, the engines that we run are Zeek and Sericata. No, it didn't help. Right, let's go back to my other mic. Any better? 
Yes, I think it's better now. Fantastic. Okay. I apologize for that, guys. Um, so in this case, our processing nodes run both Zeek and Sericata and a custom intelligence engine that does some post-processing after the fact. Um, results are indexed within Elasticsearch, as I mentioned previously, and we utilize Zeek's file carving framework in order to pull out uh, files that are carved from, uh, right, uh, from, uh, from the PCAP that has been analyzed. Um, we also store the PCAP itself because in some situations, you know, detections will be written against individual packets and not um, transaction-based logs. You can also see here all the logs that we pull out via Zeek uh, and Sericata, and then some of the custom logs that we also generate. So I want to jump into the demos. Um, and this is a little bit more geared towards, uh, I, I do have slides in case the demos end up breaking, but uh, let's try to do this live. And I wanted to just demo some of the functionality of the site. So this is the front page of Packet Total. You can actually upload a PCAP from any um, place on the website uh, using this little icon up here. I typically just do it from the front page. And if you're looking for a source of packet capture files, um, one of my favorite resources to take advantage of is called um, malwaretrafficanalysis.com. It is a website that uh, Brad Duncan, I believe, has been maintaining since 2013. Um, and it includes extremely detailed write-ups of sandbox malware detonations and the artifacts produced by that malware. They almost always contain the PCAP file, which is really great for our purposes. And so I'll grab one of the latest from the site. Uh, I did this last night, actually, so I've already got it downloaded. Um, this particular infection is called Guildma. It's, uh, I think, a fairly uh, prevalent banking Trojan that's seen in uh, Latin American countries, but primarily Brazil. And in this write-up, the initial vector for the malware was through um, what was a mouse ban campaign. So it was through an email attachment that once executed, use some living off the land techniques to drop like a second stage malicious payload into the target environment. And I believe that's where the sandbox starts writing the PCAP file. Um, so I already went ahead and pulled this uh, the other night. Let's go ahead and drop this into packet total and just sort of see what the analysis workflow looks like. You can drag and drop it directly into the interface. Got to fill out a CAPTCHA. And before I go any further, I do want to say that um, it says it all over the site, but please be careful what you upload onto uh, packettotal.com. Please don't upload PCAPs containing PII. I, I really recommend only uploading PCAPs captured from sandbox environments. And even then there are some considerations like, do you want adversaries being aware that you're analyzing their malware? In some cases, if you know it's a, you believe you're looking at like a zero day or something, you may not want to. So. Um, certainly some considerations there. We have a getting started guide to help um, kind of navigate that process. Um, this PCAP analyzed almost instantly, not because our engines are super fast, but because it had previously been seen before. So it took us right to the page. Typically you have to wait a couple of minutes before a PCAP um, is uh, ready to go. Um, so I'm gonna go through some of these views here uh, really quickly because of time. Most of these tabs correspond to Zeek and Sericata logs. Uh, the Zeek logs that you saw previously in the architecture slide and then Sericata's eve.json log, which is their primary learning log. Um, and you can refer to the architecture slide to see exactly what these logs map to um, after the presentation, if you're curious, or I'm happy to talk about them. I'll highlight a few here. Uh, the malicious activity tab maps to Sericata signature-based alerts. And it's not really seen here, but we also have a suspicious activity log that maps to Zeke's notice log. So anything that's generated by the notice framework would end up there. Um, there are also tons of protocols that are generated. Again, these are one-to-one -one with most of the logs that take place uh, that are generated by Zeke. Um, of interest to this particular capture, I think, is the transferred file log. Uh, right away, once this logs, once this loads up, you can look at you know all of the files that were exchanged through sources that were supported by 
um, by Zeek file analyzers. I think there are quite a few uh, now. Uh, I think you, you get SSL, FTP, SMTP, and a, and a few others. HTTP obviously is, is what we see primarily in this, um, this view. Because we do the file, because Zeek does the file carving and we upload all of those to our file store, you can also download each of these individually. Again, be careful. A lot of times, if you're looking at malware, there's going to be malware in these payloads um, in the carved files. And uh, you can also do things like look them up on virustotal.com. So, just really quick, you know, I see an executable file here, a DOS executable. And I'm going to pivot over to. Um, virus total just to see if that hash has been seen before. And right away, we can see that two security vendors flag this as potentially malicious. I'm not sure if this is the malicious payload that was pulled down um, as part of that uh, Gilma attack. However, uh, it, it is a good place to start. Um, there are a couple other engines that are supported in here as well, Virus Bay and Threat Crowd being the other two good ones. Um, I'm going to jump over to a couple different ways that you can view this data. Uh, the timeline view, this is one of my favorite views in Packet Total. This is another cool way of looking at the con.log. Um, and it's just, it's sort of a, a representation of the different transactions or conversations rather that occurred within that, that con.log. Uh, items here are arranged chronologically, thicker items represent longer durations. Um, you can click on each of these and see exactly how long these durations lasted. Um, so around seven seconds for this you know, DNS request. I'd be curious to kind of see what was up with that. Um, you can zoom out and see uh, all the protocols that sort of took place in here. You'll notice that some of these extend to the end and that's simply because the connection wasn't terminated before the capture was finished. The second view that I think is pretty cool is the graphs view. Um, so this is just a, another way of visualizing, again, traffic within these PCAP files. So, so you can um, quickly see you know, relevant metrics for all of the different protocols and logs that are supported by packettotal.com. Um, for the most part, these are one-to-one -one with what's in the console log, but there are some differences. If you were to go over here to the transactions, um, like, or click on any of these metrics, you could actually pull up each of the individual uh, line items and scroll through it. So just kind of a nicer way of visualizing what's going on inside of uh, con log and same thing for DNS and all these other protocol these logs. Um, for the sake of time, I want to bounce out of this demo really quick and talk a little bit about search. Search is a super important part of Packet Total. Um, and it was a major goal, again, for the tool in general. Um, in many ways, I think it's almost as important as providing like a very quick and accurate PCAP analysis. Um, so to access search, uh, click the search icon. It'll take you to a search on the site. Um, you can type in free text searches here. Because we used query DSL backed by Elasticsearch on the back end, you also have access to all kinds of cool search operations. If I wanted to look for, say, Metasploit, um, notice I'm using wildcards here so that I can check to see if this occurred in any substrings, and I'm not just doing like exact keyword matches. Um, in this view, you actually see which logs uh, this term has been matched in. Uh, and you can click on the PCAP itself to take you to the overall view or dive into each of these individual logs. Um, once you're in that log, you can filter by keyword. So you know, Metasploit will get you uh, the two uh, vulnerabilities or the two signatures that fired under emerging threat signatures that we use for Sericata um, in this situation. So let's jump back over to search. And I just wanted to sort of demo um, a little bit more search functionality. You can get a little bit fancier with it. And uh, um, depending on the load on the site, it, it may or may not return results. If you wanted to do something like combine a specific log with a particular keyword, you can do stuff like that. Um, this query, uh, again, if load is, if it has time to actually finish on the back end, which it doesn't look like it did, but it would return 
only meta exploit keywords that exist within um, the malicious activity log or the log that's produced by Sericata in this case. Um, there, there's a lot of functionality built into search and we realized pretty quickly that if you were, that it can be kind of overwhelming to our end users. So we built a tool called advanced search that will help you craft these queries. So you can navigate to each of these logs individually um, and see the fields that are made available there. Clicking on any of these fields will populate them up here in the search bar. And depending on the search aggregator that you choose, you can combine these as either anded or or expressions. Um, there's also one more view that I think will be very useful to malware researchers that are looking to kind of find samples of this traffic of this, you know, C2 traffic or um, how, you know, a how malware might be propagated across the network. And that's this malware page. Um, and again, I'm going to give it a couple of seconds to load because this is a fairly intense query that it's making on the back end. But right away, you can kind of go through each of these malware categories um, and get some cool write-ups related to, you know, what this malware actually is, uh, what campaigns it was seen in, the first time it was seen uh, in the wild, and then PCAPs that, that match, you know, one or more indicators. And we, we build these search queries out themselves. I'm a little hesitant to call them signatures because they're a little bit looser than that. Um, but for example, if I wanted to come back here and say, hey, like what's, what's a good query to pull back Mirai uh, botnet traffic. I can do that. And you just simply click this view and search button. And then right up here at the top, we have a nice long uh, query that will highlight some of these examples. So we're getting a bit short on time. I, um, and I know that there are a couple of questions in the chat that I would like to get to at the end. I did want to demo one more thing, and that is similar search. This is one of my favorite features of the tool, and I think it's something that kind of sets back a total apart from um, other uh, static PCAP analyzers online, and that's the similar, the similar packet capture search. And you can kind of think of it as a reverse um, image search for Google um, images. So you know, we're, but we're doing the exact same thing with PCAPs. So again, it's a demo. I'm going to do the best I can to, and hope that this loads. But, you know, say I want to find a bunch of PCAPs that are similar to this one. Well, I can click on that similar PCAPs tab. And right away, you know, I, I, I start to build out these aggregate queries in the back end that do stuff like um, compare match terms. And um, obviously, terms with higher match strength will show up at the top. Here's another example over here. Um, uh, of, I think, some C2 traffic that we saw uh, from, uh, forget the name of the data set. But, you know, right away, we're able to pivot to other PCAPs that could contain um, this type of information. With all of that being said, I'm going to hop back over to my slides. And I did want to bring up one more thing before I wrap up this presentation. And that is that we did launch an API several years ago uh, to, it really ended up being something we only made available to some of our users. Uh, it, it, we did this to be able to make sure that the site still continued to perform um, relatively well. Um, but as of today, I would like to open it up to a few more uh, users. And with the API, you can actually do some pretty cool things that aren't even available within the search front end. Um, the, probably, the, you know, the one that will be most interesting to people that are looking for packet captures is you can kind of programmatically automate the process of downloading PCAP files that match a certain a search quite criteria. But also, you know, as you saw earlier, I ran that that ANDID query with Metasploit that had those wild cards in it, um, and it timed out, resulted in some results not being sent back. Um, well, if you're using the API, you have the ability to fork that job as an async job into the background and then pull those results as they kind of stream in. So I think this is a cool feature and something that some of the more advanced users will certainly um, find fairly useful. And with that being said, uh, let me see if, I don't know how much time I have. Shut me down if I'm, if I'm all out of time. Um, I did get one question 
Uh, David, your piece, how well th did it work with beacon detection? Um, yeah, it's only as good as the logs that it generates. I think that it was sort of said earlier, uh, Zeke is really good at telling you what happened, but not whether or not it's malicious or benign. So whatever, um, depending on how the beaconing is taking place, this is something that may or may not show up in a Zeke log. We actually supplemented the tool with Sericata for that purpose explicitly because Sericata is really good at just saying, hey, this thing matched this signature. Um, here you go. Uh, this It's indicative of this, this type of activity. And um, you, know, you can use that information to pivot into Zeke logs, which I think is uh, fairly useful. But as far as um, giving you a better answer than that, I, I don't, I, I, I have not actually used it for that particular use case in, in quite some time. Um, but I assume that it's as basically as good as the signatures that we have running on the back end. Awesome. Well, if there are no more questions, and feel free to, to talk to me offline, I do apologize for the initial technical uh, difficulties. I think that's just part of uh, the work from home life. But thank you for keeping me straight on, on the call. And um, please feel free to sign up for the API, give us some feedback. Um, and, you know, let me know if you have any more questions. Jamin, thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Up next, we have Jamin Pumphrey, who's going to speak about Zeke, the truth in the cloud. And Jamin, if you want to share your screen and test your sound right quick, that would be great. Or, I'm sorry, Jamin. I mean, Adam, if you want, let me get Adam back in the room. I'm just moving people around. Adam, sorry about that. If you want to test your screen and share your slides, uh, please do. Okay. 